Hello my quilting friends! My name is Leah Day and this tutorial we are learning how to make this baby onesie t-shirt quilt. This is made from onesies that Betty had since she was born. A lot of them were really really tiny but I want to show you how you can cut them up and turn them into this awesome stitch and flip baby quilt. So let's get started. So the very first step is to cut up your baby onesies. Now this is the step that I typically take the most time on. That's why I'm trying to take the least amount of time on it this time uh, because it it does get a little tedious. So if I've, I got a long sleeve onesie, I just start by whacking off those shoulders, taking off the hem, and then slicing down any seams. And that is just going to get me a nice flat, small piece of fabric very quickly. I got my two there. Uh, and I'm gonna go straight across, basically cutting off uh, from where that binding is around the leg, right across. Uh, and yes, I am losing a little bit of fabric here, guys. I understand if you want to save every single square inch, you're going to be a lot more careful. I'm more interested in doing this quickly and actually getting it done before Betty turns 18. Okay, the next step is to take our rough cut onesies and cut them down into set widths. This does not necessarily mean perfect squares. In fact, actually, I ended up with a whole lot of rectangles because most onesies are longer than they are wide. And what I mean by set widths is I went through them and organized them by size. I had a lot of really small ones when Betty was really little and they got, of course, progressively bigger as she grew. So I took them and arranged them by their size and I took the smaller ones and I cut them into a smaller shape. So I found that five inches wide, six inches wide, and eight inches wide were the right widths for the garments that I had for Betty. This might be different depending on what you have and what you're making your t-shirt quilt out of. So just understand that the next step is just to start cutting and have a set width that you're cutting to. So in this case, I'm gonna probably cut this to five inches. Let's just see what I can get out of it though. Actually, it looks like I might be able to get six inches out of this. So I just put my ruler on the onesie and I check and see how wide I can cut and get most of the design. And notice that I have still both pieces stacked together. This is gonna save you time to cut two pieces at once. So here we go, that looks good. Yes, we are cutting and we are not saving every little scrap that we could of these onesies. This part, I cannot emphasize this enough, processing your garments is the thing that will bog you down and will take the most time. So I've really tried to streamline it here as much as possible. Now I have found, on, especially on ones like this that have a really nice emblem, it might be nice just to have it even so it's more of a square or it's more even, you have a more even kind of background around that design. So in that case, I'll cut and make a little narrow rectangle. And then if it's a really flashy color, like this yellow is pretty flashy, and I've got some black that I'm gonna be using in this too. Betty had some black onesies as well. I find that cutting that up just a little bit, and you can vary these scraps. You know, you could have some really long ones. You could have some little narrow skinny ones. All of it works. It's all gonna be great, and it's gonna look awesome in this quilt. Now we're ready to get to the fun part, and that is arranging our baby quilt and beginning the piecing process. For this, you're gonna need some foundation strips, and these are cut the same widths that we cut our onesies. So I've got some five inch strips, six inch strips, and I've already arranged my eight inch strip here. I ended up with only one eight inch strip. And I do advise starting with your widest garments first. So that way, anything, if you have a few left over, but not enough to make a whole strip, you can take those, cut them down, and create a narrower strip. So that's what I did here. This one ended up being seven inches. I just cut, took and cut a few of these eight inches down. I just had one garment that came out at seven inches for some odd reason, and I really wanted to incorporate that into the quilt. So what we're gonna do is just arrange the T-shirts on top of your fabric. And the foundation strips, I cut mine out of flannel. It's up to you what you decide to cut out with. I would 
really advise 100% cotton woven fabric. I like flannel because it's super, super soft. It can be the batting in this quilt. You don't need an additional batting if you don't want to, if you want a really lightweight quilt. Uh, but what's nice about it is it's slightly grippy. So it's gonna kind of slightly grip these fabrics and hang on to them. So I can arrange these here and then I can shift them to my sewing machine and stitch them really, really easily. Now, one other thing about flannel is it likes to shrink. So before you cut it into your strips, especially, wash it in hot, hot water before you cut it into your strips. And the strips, as far as the length, needs to be the length that you want your baby quilt to be. So after getting my quilt arranged, I roll up those strips of flannel and all of my pieces and I keep everything in perfect arrangement so that way they don't get discombobulated going from my table to my machine. As for my machine, this is the Eversewn Celine. You can check it out at leahday.com slash Celine. I have a walking foot, an open toe walking foot attached here. And this is from our deluxe foot set. And my stitch length is 2.5. The reason why my stitch length is that long and I'm using a walking foot is because I do find that stitching these fabrics, it just can get a little wiggly wobbly and it, you know, it's one of those things where we really want that stability and control that we get from our walking foot. Okay, so to get started with the stitch and flip process, I do think it helps to have a line of stitching just to begin with. So I'm gonna feed this through. I do have a scrap charger already stitched through on my machine. What is this for? It helps us be able to get started on the right foot or on the right stitch. Let me just show you how I do it. I just take two pieces of fabric, layer them together, place that right against the needle and I stitch through it until my needle is one or two stitches off the edge. And then I take my fabrics my stitch and flip row and I feed that right up against the needle so that the next stitch taken is onto my row and that way my project is not going to get sucked down into the machine. The thread tails are much shorter so I waste less bobbin thread. It just keeps everything working better. It keeps the machine in stitching mode and I love that. Okay now for the stitch and flip process I take that piece I just secured with that line of stitching. I smooth it out really trying to get the knit to kind of bond with that flannel. Flannel is naturally grippy so it's going to want to kind of stick together and then now I take my next piece. This was the piece that went next to my little pink cupcake I flip that over so that the two fabrics are right sides together and I align that straight edge, just like so. Smooth everything out and then it's ready to stitch. So we are literally going to stitch and flip our way through each piece on this row. And as for my seam allowance, you don't have to be perfect with this. I'm generally lining this up with a quarter inch seam allowance on my walking foot. But again, it's one of those things where you don't have to be absolutely perfect because essentially this is foundation piecing. We're using the flannel fabric as a foundation and it doesn't matter really if the stitching, if the seam allowance is absolutely perfect or not. So that's how we're gonna do it. I flip over that piece so it's right side up, smooth it out nicely, unroll my row a little bit more, grab the next piece that I've planned, flip it over, right sides together, and I stitch through that. Now, once you get comfortable with this and you kind of have it down with one row at a time, then you can start stitching through multiple rows at a time. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean by that. So here I'm stitching onto this one, nice and even stitching. I'm just keeping that guide lined up with the edge of those pieces, but again, it does not have to be perfect. The wonderful thing about this quilt is it really is beginner proof. You can be any level of a quilter, total beginner, never made a quilt in your life, and this is gonna end up working out. So I grabbed another row that I've already gotten started. I've already started that stitch and flip process. I'm just gonna smooth this one out, make sure it's on track, and I can feed that one 
into my machine too. So you don't have to go from scrap charger, you know, straight onto a scrap charger. You can go into another row once you're comfortable. And this is gonna make it that much faster to finish your baby quilt. So I reached the end of my row, smoothed out that last piece, and we're gonna stitch through the end, just flipping it over and having the flannel right side up. And the reason is I wanna see where the end of that flannel is and stitch about a quarter inch from the end. So that way, whenever I take my strips to my cutting mat, I can trim off this end and not cut through my stitching. So there we go, I got that row complete. Clip that row off, do the same thing right here. Now you might be wondering what happens if, let's say you run out of fabric and you still have flannel row left. Well, just go cut some more onesies. It's a good idea to have a few spare pieces that you haven't planned for the quilt, that you haven't placed yet. It's just in case maybe the piecing shifts downward and you need another piece to go on the end. You run out of space, right? So that's a good idea. Uh, now, what if you don't like the fabrics? <laughs> you know, you start getting picky and you're like, oh, I don't, I don't particularly like that onesie as much as I once did. Well, the nice thing is uh, knit fabric does not fray and you can use that to your advantage. So I'm gonna stitch through this scrap charger. And let's say I decided that I no longer liked this strawberry anymore. Well, I could take another square bigger than this, place it on top, stitch on both sides, and leave the edges raw, and that would be perfectly fine. Now, this step is not tricky. It is just simply trimming up the edges of our strip so that way we don't have anything extending beyond the flannel. This makes it easier to piece the rows together. So I'm gonna align my ruler just with the edge of that flannel and I'm gonna trim off any of the knit fabric that extends beyond that edge. Now down here on the end, the flannel might have done something weird. The knit can do some weird stuff too. Let's just square off this end, lining up the ruler with the edge of the flannel on a straight line on the ruler as straight as it can be and then just trim off the edge of that fabric. There we go. Our strip is trimmed up and ready for piecing. So I'm back on the machine. I have my two strips right sides together and I have put on quilting gloves. These are Grippy Machine Gers quilting gloves. They help me get a grip of the fabrics, especially that flannel can just, I can start sliding my hands over it and not being able to get a really good grip. So I like having that extra bit of control. I'm just keeping those edges in alignment and I am trying to quilt or stitch more or less a quarter inch seam allowance. But again, just like the piecing we've done before, it does not matter if you can piece an accurate quarter inch seam allowance or not. Uh, it really doesn't matter at all because we are already, we've already completed our piecing on the strips. This is just holding those rows, those strips together. So unless you have a very specific size that you want this quilt to become, uh, you really don't need to worry about seam allowance too much. And that makes it also a very easy quilt to make. So I'm just gonna continue piecing these rows together. You might have situations like this where, you know, even with trimming, the rows got a little weird. Don't worry about it too much. Again, just try and be as accurate as you can. Keep those rows together, try and stitch straight, and don't worry about it being absolutely perfect. So once I get these together, I'm gonna continue to combine them with other rows until the entire quilt top is pieced together. So here is my finished baby quilt. I am so happy with how this turned out. And I love seeing all those early onesies that Betty wore when she was a newborn. I love this. And I'm gonna really enjoy seeing her play with it. Now, at this point, this is a quilt top, meaning it is really, you know, the flannel plus the um, onesie material. I would consider that one layer. And I could give this to Betty and let her play with it. And because it's knit, it's not gonna fray too badly. And I probably maybe could wash it, fingers crossed, and not have it fray too badly. The flannel would be what would fray and start to fall apart. But really, ideally, 
in order for Betty to be able to play with this, drag it around the house, me be able to wash it a million times, it really needs to be layered with batting and backing fabric and then quilted. And that means I have stitches that run through all three layers of the quilt. We can do that with the walking foot that we use to piece the quilt. We can also do that with something called free motion quilting that uses a darning foot. And we also use rulers and that's called ruler quilting. So if you would like to see this project layered and quilted and you'd like to follow along with that, please let me know in the comments below. I plan to finish this project, but I will only film it if you want to see it. So let me know if you'd like to see this baby onesie quilt quilted and you can find the full tutorial plus links to all of the tools and quilting gear that I use for this project at leahday.com slash baby onesie. Come and check it out, help support my quilt shop, and until next time, let's go quilt.